Being multidimensional is a good thing. So when you start thinking about streams of income, think of multiple streams of income. I wanted to preach, I'm called to preach. I, you know me from preaching, you know me from ministering the gospel, and I love what I do. But I had dreams for my children that were bigger than what I do. I did not want my children to have to fake being me in order to be successful. I wanted to create an entrepreneurial in environment for them and so I started investing in real estate and I started building communities and I'm getting ready to build more communities in America and I'm looking for other places in the world where we can build uh, these communities, these smart communities that are conducive to the future. You do not build your business on where you are or where you've been. You build your business on where you're going. So then, if you are building for the future, then you have to reimagine your strategy. I'm going to give you a couple of big words, big, big words, like strategy. This is how you're going to do it. You're going to do it through a strategy. I got here through a strategy. A, what is a strategy? A synchronized step-by-step -step plan from point A to point B. Your strategy is important. You've got to fix your strategy. If you've been doing what you've been doing for five years and it's not working, it doesn't mean you need to give up your idea. You might need to give up your strategy. Your strategy of accomplishment has to change with the times. You may not have hit your customer yet, but that doesn't mean your customer is not out there. You've got to find somebody, and let me tell you who wants what you got. The person who wants what you have is a person who sees what you have as an answer to their problem. People will go get answers. They are not looking for problems. What do you solve with what you bring? And you don't have to have a degree to do this. It could be as simple as my father's mop in a bucket. My father ended up with 52 employees in the 60s because he built a business that solved the problem. Not all of us will be doctors. Not all of us will be chemists. Not all of us will be lawyers. Not all of us will, will, build, uh, 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 will be astronauts. But the astronaut still needs a plumber. The doctor still needs an electrician. Whatever your business is, it must be an answer to somebody's problem. It must solve that problem and fix that problem. And when you do whatever you do and you find yourself maxing out at what you do, what you do is not who you are. What you do is not who you are. What you do is not who you are. People say T.D. Jakes is a preacher. First of all, he wasn't always. Second of all, T.D. Jakes is a man. He is a man called to preach. See, when people give you titles, they imprison you. If I bought into that, I wouldn't have done almost $500 million worth of films at the box office because I would have said, I'm a preacher, I can't do that. Don't let anybody lock you up with a title in a prison that is beneath your level of gifting. You are whatever is in you. You are whatever is inside of you. You are whatever you think about at night. You are whatever you dream. You are whatever is in your head. I want to break somebody out of jail right now. You are more than what people call you. Am I in the right place? You are more than the job title that you have. You are more than the company you work for. You are more than anything you have experienced up to this point. You are everything that gives you energy when you think about it. Find out what are the things that make you leap out of the bed in the morning. What are the things that give you energy when you think about them? Your purpose is in your passion. Your purpose is in your passion. Don't sit there and say, I don't know why I'm here. You do know why you're here. Find the thing that gives you energy when you do it, that ideas start teeming over in your head when you get in it. Find the thing that when you get into it, you're curious about it, you're attracted to it, you're drawn to it. Because whatever the anointing you respect is the anointing you receive.
Oh, can I talk to you, somebody? The anointing you respect is the anointing you receive. So the person that you idolize, you probably idolize them because they're doing something that is in you. Other people ignore them. And you would walk a mile to hear them or see them or hear them sing or watch them build or hear them orate or whatever it is that they do. It's because it's in you. When I was eight years old, I was sitting in the back of the car with my mother and my mother was a speaker and she went out and did public speaking. And I was sitting in the back of the car at eight years old. I said, right now I'm going to hear you speak. And they call me Miss Jake's son. But the time will come, you'll come to hear me speak and they'll call you Tom Jake's mother. Instincts are inside of you and they are never one dimensional. You are more than your job. So if your job goes down, it doesn't mean you have to go down. While you're working for a company, never stop branding yourself. One of the problems that I find prevalent with millennials who, by the way, I love mentoring you above anybody. You are the best investment because you have the longest shelf life. You will outlast me and you assure the fact that my work continues. I cannot have success without a successor. So I'm committed to you winning. Let me say that first of all. I am committed to you winning. The problem is your strength is your weakness. You were raised with technology, in a, which is a great strength, but it's also a great weakness because when you are raised with something that responds in predictable ways by touch, when you are placed in unpredictable situations, you don't do well because you expect people to respond like computers. They do not. People respond in unpredictable ways. And let me tell you something that you're going to have to become more proficient in. Relationships. And relationships are not text. They're not tweets. They're communication. We are designed that we read more than language. I don't have to, I don't have to, like a minute ago, you, you were doing what you were doing. I didn't know what it meant, but I felt what it meant. So communication is more than speech. It's eye language, it's body language, it's voice inflection. All of those are tools. Because when you get ready to do business, people don't just do business with ideas. People do business with people. They do business with people. And you have to understand in building that process, it is not like building a face page. There's work to it. And one of the mistakes we made, and when I say we, I mean my generation, I mean anybody that you admire, it may not be me, it may be Diddy, it may be, it, it may be Diddy, it may be Oprah, it may be Tyler Perry, it may be somebody you saw, maybe Beyonce. You see us after we arrive. You didn't see us when we struggled. So when you decide, I'm gonna be like him, you're coming in at the end of the movie. You, you missed the days I couldn't feed my kids. You missed the day that I went out in the field and gathered apples to feed my kids or used paper towels for diapers because I couldn't buy diapers. You came in later when you saw me on TV and you want to leap over all of those no's to get to a yes. But it is the 400 no's that lady was talking about before the yes that makes you who you are. And when you get a no, you give up and say, this must not be it. That's not true. That woman got 399 no's before she got one yes. You have to be, you have to have the resolve inside of yourself to resist the temptation to believe the detractors and to continue to believe the voice within. And why is that important? It is the strength you gain from your failures that make you strong enough to stand up to your success. If I wanted to really destroy you right now, real fast, real quick, I would give you my life.
right now and all that goes with it and all the 300 and so employees of my little company I would give it all to you right now right now in a flash and say there it's yours take it you know why that would be criminal I didn't give you the struggle and the strife and the experience and the pain that created it you wouldn't be able to handle it you wouldn't be able to stand it it would be it would be murderous to win too soon let me go biblical on you the reason the prodigal son ended up in the hog pen is it's not that he didn't get what was his it was that he got what was his too soon and there is something to be respected about process the process the little steps that make a mile it is not the destination it is the things you learn along the way it is the people who beguiled you and tricked you that make you wiser. Wisdom is made out of the stupid things you did before you got it. Don't miss it. That process is invaluable to you getting there. Does that mean that you have to be my age before you get there? Absolutely not. But it does mean that you don't go from thinking a thought to producing an idea without pain no more than a woman goes from having sex to getting up in the morning with a baby in her arms. The gestation period is critical. Gestation creates formation. They teach CEOs to always be interviewing. And when I learned that, every time I have lunch or eat with somebody or meet somebody at the bus stop or ride in a car with somebody, I'm always asking questions. They don't know, but I'm secretly interviewing them, seeing if they have a skill that I can use in our company or on our team, or they have some ability that would accentuate me. Because I always want to surround myself with people who are good at what I am not good at. I guarantee you, if I look into your phone, your phone is filled with names of people who do what you do. You gotta break out of the box of only hanging out with people who do what you do. Because if you only surround yourself with people who do what you do, inevitably, they will compete with you. But if you surround yourself with people who are good at what you're not good at, they will complete you. Go from surrounding yourself with people who compete with you to surrounding yourself with people who complete you. So the lawyer needs to hang out with the doctor and the doctor needs to hang out with the dentist and the CEO needs to hang out with the preacher because I always get excited when I have a friend that doesn't do what I do. When I have a friend who does what I do, I have to put up with these little snide remarks, you know, little funny little halfway compliments where they're a little bit of a hater, but they're not really a hater, but they're sort of a hater. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Where they give you these little halfway compliments that you don't know how to take and you sort of give them a half grin and you walk away wondering what did they mean by that? Put those people at the back of the list and find somebody who does what you don't do because they will complete you, they will fulfill you, they will strengthen you, and they will make you more rounded. And they will give you different perspectives if you have the courage to admit what you're not good at, you will find out who to pick to surround yourself with. I want to hire my weaknesses, not my strengths. Because when you hire your strengths, they're just waiting on you to get sick so they can take your job. Hire your weaknesses. Surround yourself with people who complete your vision. And then build your team. Thank you.